Hello and welcome everybody. This tutorial is about the uh, new recent update that we have released, the campaign manager and the GMs viewer. So in this video, I'm going to show you how the new GMs viewer is working and how you can use that to play on with your PCs, either on a TV screen or a projector, or even a uh, long range with players that you would like to invite using our remote viewer. But first of all, let's start with what you can see in the new GMs view that you're currently looking at. Um, when you create a new campaign, as you might have noticed, you now have instead of a play button, you have the campaign button up there. This allows you to create new campaigns and to add maps to a campaign. So um, once you've created a campaign and once you have added a map to your campaign, you can now open this map and you will come to the GM's view of that map, which is a cloned version of the original map. So whatever you do does not affect your original map. It is the campaign version of the map. And you can always see that you are currently in the GM's view. When you look at this um, yellow um, tab up there, that is telling you what campaign you're currently uh, in and what map you're currently on. You also have this new GM's toolbar here where you can now do different things. Um, and I'm going to walk you through those things right now. So another thing you might notice is we have changed the zoom. You now have this fixed zoom bar up here with a little quick navigation um, to switch levels. And we have this fog of war slider that is only available while you are in the GM's view. So what I can do here is I can change the um, intensity of my fog of war, right? Um, but since this is all about GMs and players, let's bring a player into the game. So um, going to the tokens, we have the player token. I defined that in the campaign editor, like up here, I defined the token. And now I can add this to my map. But before I do that, I will activate the line of sight for this token. So let's say that he has um, five feet. Oops, I need to select that one, obviously. Five, no, it's not five feet, it's five squares. There you go. When I place it down, it will automatically render the line of sight for this token. Um, but we still need to invite this player. So let's go to the players tab and I could do two different things. I could create a uh, local player. This is just another window um, for, for on my PC that I can shift to the projector or I can shift to the TV screen or using Chromecast, sending it to Chromecast. Um, what I want to do is I want to invite someone. So I'm going to copy that link. And now give me a second, I'm going to create a new player here. So you might see that here, um, our little figure is jumping up and down, requesting our attention. And I click there and I see that the quick elemental is requesting access. So I give him access now. And now we have um, in the overlay here, um, what the player is going to see. So when I shift the viewport, you can see in the overlay that the viewport changes as well. Um, when I select my player, I can now move him. But before I'm going to do that, I'm going to show you another thing that we've implemented, and that is the distance metric. When you activate that, you can choose between different um, metrics. Uh, let's go for the 5e, which means that when I move my token, I will get a distance indicator telling me how many squares this token is currently moving. Right. Um, again, 
Now that you are in the new GM's view, this is live editing. That means that when I shift the tree, as you can see in the player view, the tree shifts. Um, we have also added a circular context menu. So when I right click that tree, um, I get this circular menu where I can ping or I can hide the tree and it vanishes. It's still visible for me as the GM, but it's not visible for your players. Right, so let's talk about the toolbars here. Um, you have this new GM's toolbar and um, they're different, they have different functions. So this one um, hides or reveals a full room. We're going to see that in a minute. Um, this one lets you brush Fog of War with a brush. So in our case, I can select that and either by switching between those two states up here or by pressing the X key, I can now brush away the Fog of War manually. I can also undo that, and just brush it back. Um, but as you see, it is not affecting the line of sight. So line of sight overrides whatever you do with the Fog of War. Just keep that in mind. Fog of War brush, ping tool. Uh, here you find all the maps that you've added to your campaign. The notes, uh, the journal, and we've already added a player. So let's start, let's start exploring this map. So he's going to move here. There you see I brushed around with that, so I'm going to hide that. And I need to, pardon me, I need to follow my player along. My player is now moving behind the tower. Um, and the reason why he's doing that is because, showcase, um, is because I want to show you how you can interact with your map. Because the player, for some reason, learned that um, this tree has something about him and um, he wants to investigate the tree so I can hide that tree and now you see that there is a stair beneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my player and put him onto the stair. There you go. With the circular context menu, I can now send the player down into the next level by using the staircase down or if you would have a level above, the staircase up. So when I click that, um, my player is going to switch from one level into the other. So I click on that and he's gone. Um, he is now on the level below and since I want to do adjustments before I reveal what he's going to see, um, I have activated that he should not automatically see what happens. So when I go into the next level, there you go, he has reached the lower level but I still need to activate that view for him. So um, I can click on that and I can set to unfreeze. You have control over that. So you can decide yourself if you want to auto switch or if you want to have a freeze level switch and then reactivate. So now we are in the level below and let me show you some different tools down here. So I'm going to What am I doing? Right. So I'm going to readjust the screen a little bit. And now I'm going to move the token here. Um, line of sight automatically um, creates, let's zoom out there a little bit. Let's, let's have a bigger viewport. There you go. Um, by the way, you can also can't remember if I've shown it to you, um, but you can also rotate the orientation in case your um, system, like your setup, your TV screen or your projector needs that. Um, so you can do all the different rotations here. Um, I don't need that for showcasing, so I will leave it like that. 
this tool automatically reveals the full room. So if I would click on the room, the full room would be revealed. Click again and it's hidden. Reveal that room, hide that room. Um, again, I could use my brush. Oh, wrong screen. I could use my brush to reveal something manually or let's undo that, um, hide it. So what I can do, what I wanted to show you is um, you can also adjust what kind of fog of war you want to show. So in our case, let's change the cover texture for our fog of war into brown clay. And let's uh, adjust that a little bit. Let's say 300%. There you go. So now you don't have this black fog of war, but you have the um, earthy fog of war that you would have if you are um, in below ground. You could do, you can do, you can do uh, weird things with that. You could change that to water, and you could have a water battle where ships, um, based on the line of sight, only see what they can see on the sea. So I think this is a very, this is a very interesting um, tool. Let's teleport our player up to this area here because I want to showcase you what we can do with live editing. So I'm going to move the player here. <clears throat> First thing we can do is um, I can turn with the circular context menu, I can turn on and off light sources. So I can say the slide is off or I can say turn on and you have the light and the dynamic light rendering. But since we are live editing this map, I can also start to add um, additional rooms on the fly. So if my players are investigating the room and I want to give them a little bit more then just um, you found nothing, then I could quickly add a room here. Let's decorate that. Um, let's put in a chest. And we're good with that. So when the player rolls an investigation check, and he can find the secret door, I can simply go to my door and add one here. And as you will see, the door will automatically appear to the player. So if my player is cautious, he's going to move up to the door and I can use the reveal tool to just open the room for him and now he can look inside. Uh, we haven't implemented yet uh, spell templates. We're going to do that later down the road. For now, you can use the um, brush tool to uh, simulate spell effects if you like to. So what you could do is you could go um, and let's look for lava. I don't know if I have it added. Nope, so let's edit. Here you go. And in case he triggers a trap here, you could then start to brush lava in here and it will automatically um, update again. So this is a nice workaround if you want to use spell templates in the meantime until we have released them um, to show what area effects or difficult terrain or whatever you want to show to your players. Um, Right, I think that's it so far. Let me check, did we work through all the tools? Yes, we have the um, reveal, brush, ping, map, notes, journal, and all the stuff. So there you go. Right, if you have any more questions, if you want to give us feedback, um, let us know on Discord. Let us know here in the comments below. 
And um, until next time, happy map making. Thank you.